Hey sneaker friends, today we're gonna cover one of my favorite topics. Can you guess it? It's plastic, yep. Today we're gonna look at the Ultra Boost X Parley, and we're gonna talk about how the Parley fibers are made and what's different about this model. This is the Ultra Boost X Parley version. I bought it on Adidas's website. It was $170, which was marked down from originally being $200. I bought a women's seven because they didn't have a women's seven and a half. And I think the shoe is a little bit tight, but I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Uh, I do feel like it fits true to size, uh, although I would have preferred to have the seven and a half. The outsole of this shoe is pretty standard stretch web that you'll find on most Ultra Boost shoes. Uh, the thickness is about three millimeters with a one and a half web, and the hardness is about 70. So it's you can expect the same amount of durability as you usually see on Ultra Boost. Now this is a neutral type running shoe. You're gonna find that it has about the same amount of support as the Ultra Boost. It does have the torsion system in it and it matches the Ultra Boost system. It just has the little bit of torsion finger that runs up into the medial side. Now the midsole of this shoe is the same boost material that you're used to and the hardness is around 30 to 35 so I felt like it was slightly firmer when I measured it than Ultra Boost however it doesn't feel any different underfoot. You'll notice that the design of it has changed so it does not it does not have the same geometry as the standard Ultra Boost has but like I mentioned it does have the torsion finger with a little bit of the injection plate wrapping up in the heel. One thing you'll notice about this midsole is since the arch is not attached to the midsole, you can pull that arch material back and you can check out the midsole. You can see on the top of it all of the ejector pin marks. So there are little circles with a bunch of little dots in them. Those are ejector pins. So ejector pin, when the material is put into the mold, sometimes it's hard to get the part out of the mold. So what they'll do is put in ejector pins that then push the, the part out of the mold and a lot of times they leave little witness marks like you can see on this midsole. You can see them in a very linear pattern all over the bottom of the midsole and there's literally tons of them which tells me from a plastic standpoint that this material is very hard to get out of the mold. Otherwise you wouldn't have that many ejector pins and I'm looking at it now I'm literally counting one two three four five going this way and in the area of this arch so about that far there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows of them. So just in this arch area, there's more than 30 ejector pins. So imagine the entire length of this. That is a very complicated, expensive mold to build uh, with that many ejector pins. And that tells you that this material is very difficult to get out of the mold. The upper is where Parley gets involved in this model. So Parley, for those of you do that don't know, Adidas was one of the founders and their whole goal is basically to save our oceans. And so in this particular model, the project that they work, they have several different projects and programs, like there's Run for the Oceans right now, where if you have the Runtastic app, all your miles can go towards saving the ocean, which is pretty cool. Uh, check it out if you haven't yet. In this particular model, they collect garbage uh, before it gets into the ocean, so on the beaches, around beach areas, around ocean perimeters, they pick up the plastic bottles. And so imagine a plastic bottle kind of like this that someone just tossed and didn't recycle. What they do is they take this plastic, they clean it, and this is just based on my plastics knowledge. I did not get this information directly from Parley or Adidas, uh, but it's just about how you basically make fibers. But they take the plastic, they clean it, then they grind it down into what's called pellets uh, and then the pellets are extruded through a small, small die head that creates a fiber. And those fibers are then taken and they're knit with a knitting machine along with other fibers to build this entire upper that you see here. It's a pretty cool process. I really love what they're doing. I was surprised to learn that not all the fibers are actually from Parley, that they have some traditional fibers in here and it makes sense because there's some stretch and there's some properties that are in this upper that you might not get if all of your fibers are recycled. A lot of times recycled fibers don't necessarily have stretch in them or um, maybe sometimes are more difficult to work with. Another interesting fact about this upper is that they use the RMS 3D scanning system to create the geometry, to create the shape of this upper. 
So what that tells me is they scan runners in various positions, and in particular they note that they use they built this version, the female version, based on the female foot and arch geometry based on what that scanning system was giving. I love that, I think that's great. The more custom we can get, the better. The upper, you'll notice, has very few components to it. There's the prime knit upper, that center seam down the center with a little bit of strobel in the forefoot, and you can see that by the x-ray of the bottom of the sock liner in these images. There's a heel pull tab, there's a rigid heel counter, there's the lacing reinforced overlay, and then you also have the logo, which actually acts as a reinforcer and stops the material from stretching in this direction in the arch. Everything else is prime knit. The lace in this model is a simple flat lace and there's four lace loops. The sock liner in this model is flat, die cut, uh, very thin at about two millimeters of just a very simple foam. This, all this is doing is protecting you from the, the center seam stitch and the little bit of strobel that's in the forefoot. If we take a look at the weight, when I weighed these shoes, the right shoe weighed 252 grams and the left weighed 228. That's a difference of four grams and a total of 460 grams. There's a lot of boost in this shoe and not a lot of upper, so that's why the weight kind of resides a little bit less than the ultra boost, but more than some of the other shoes we've seen lately. Now for underfoot feel when I put these on, you can definitely feel the arch snugging up to your foot. I mean, it feels like a bit of a tighter sock you feel some compression from it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I actually really liked my first mile in these shoes. And then I didn't really notice that it was hugging my arch as much. And the material didn't change. I just lost the sensation of it. So it felt fine. I really like the shoe. I don't, I can't tell any other benefits that the arch being detached is giving me besides this bit more snugness of my, in my foot around my arch. Um, so I don't know if there's any benefit with it completely being detached from the midsole or not. I, I couldn't clearly tell that. But really it feels a lot like Ultra Boost except for the upper and the fit feel a little bit better. I do like this model better than Ultra Boost uh, just because it's more simple and I love that they're using the Parley uh, fibers in it. I hope that program is successful and continues to move forward. All right, if you guys have tried these, let me know what you think. If you haven't tried them, I think it's totally worth, if you can find it in your size, to feel what that arch feels like uh, so you understand why this material with 3D scan uh, is such a great fit. All right, hope you guys have an awesome day. See ya.